Welcome back everyone to Close to Broke. We're not at our usual location. We're actually here in sunny San Diego. Different change of pace, doing things slightly different. Gonna be doing a dinner with uh, Johnny Vibes later on tonight. And obviously, since this is a poker vlog, we're gonna be playing some poker. The Ocean's Eleven is like five minutes away. Probably makes the most sense to uh, enjoy this for now. Poker in the PM. Outside of that, I hope you guys have a lovely day. And let's hop into another session here in sunny San Diego. This session continues into the night, I now am having a better understanding of the table dynamics. There are a couple of pros in the game, but outside of that, a lot of really fun players, but for the most part, the game is playing really tight and semi-passive, a lot of limping going on, but the only trouble that I'm not having the ability to get used to is that the limp calling is not as frequent as it is in the LA game. So it's not anyone's problem. Just got to be able to change your strategy, I guess, towards that. And if not, you know, we're here to have fun and gamble anyways. What's better way to prove that than to open a hand like three deuce of diamonds from the button? I make it $30 to go. The small blind makes a call. We're going off to a flop that comes ace, five, nine, rainbow. The action checked to me here. I think C betting here makes sense. I go small though. Not too big, going under the half the size of the pot. I make it 25. At this point, the opponent makes a call. We're going to have to a turn card that comes the three of hearts. At this point, the action checks over me once again, and I think that we have a pretty clear check back. When we improve to a pair now, we don't need it to continue to barrel off on any other turn card that improved me by the slightest outside of making a pair. If I hit a diamond, I think I'd be putting on maximum pressure, but I think at this point... There's no real need to, so I just go ahead and check it back and try to get my equity to showdown, which we do when the river comes in ace of spades. At this point, the opponent decides to bet up for 60. I think at this point, there's just not a whole lot of hands that the flop has and contains, and my opponent's just going to be deciding to turn into a bluff on this river. I don't beat any value, I think we can say clearly here. But outside of that, you know, maybe a hand like 7-8 or 6-7. Maybe those hands now turn into bluffs. But outside of that, there's just not a whole lot. I think there's just going to be a bunch of weaker aces that can go for value on this river. Hands like tens or any pair of nine can now comfortably bet for value when the river card pairs the ace. So after a bit of thinking, I just decide to go against my regular station behavior as that train has definitely left the station. And I just go ahead and make a discipline lay down here. It's almost like deja vu when once again, I'm under the gun and we look down at Ace, Queen, Afsu. At this point, we're like five-handed because people have stepped away from the table. I race at 30. The button to straddle, make the call. We're going to have to a flop now that comes out King, 5, 4, with two spades and a heart. The action checks to me, and I think that this is a board that I should be c-betting. I end up checking in real time, but I just think that this play is not that great. Although I don't directly connect with this board, my range will do a pretty good job of doing so. When we're playing five-handed under the gun in this configuration is actually just a cutoff. And I'd be opening the fours, the fives, the, the kings of, of the world from here 100% of the time. So I'm going to have pretty good board coverage here. And outside of that, I have the ace of spades. So if I need to barrel, if I need to catch up, I'm going to have equity going to the turn card. Outside of that, if we pick up another card like a jack or a 10, we can barrel off on those cards. And even beyond that, we still have an over card to the board. All that to be said, like a complete wussy, I decide to just check it over to my opponent, who decides to bet out for 40. With the action on the straddle, he makes the call, and then once the action's on me, I think over calling here is okay. It's not the worst thing in the world, but I can promise you it's probably not the best. But once again, we do have that backdoor draw. We have several backdoor draws, actually, and ace high, by some miracle, could still be the best hand. Either way, the turn guard comes out the jack of hearts, Bringing it back to our flush draw. Not the one I was looking for. With the action once again checked over to the button, he decides to bid off for 125. As the session continues to go on, I will quickly find out that this 125 will most likely be a bluff, as this opponent has been a very, very aggressive one all night. Either way, in this hand, we both end up making the fold here, but I thought I'd mention it because... We end up playing with this opponent in a couple other hands, and I think it's important to keep note of these things. 
So far, the vibes at the table have been really great. Although I'm not winning a whole lot, it feels like everyone at the table is here to have a good time, pro or not. I'm really enjoying myself. It's been a while since I've played poker in a traditional, public, random, run-of-the-mill game. And let me tell you, this game definitely isn't anything run-of-the-mill. The action's pretty reasonable, I'd say. It's alright. And we've done a pretty good job avoiding the landmines. In this next hand, under the gun limps for $10. I'm next to act, and I like down at ace jack of diamonds. This is the easiest isolation spot I'll ever find in my life. I make it $50 to go. There are three calls, and then the action gets back over to the limper, who decides to back raise all in for $525. I've been around the black quite a bit. I know that this limp back raise is probably never going to be a hand that's absolutely dominated by myself, like ace 10 suited or ace 5 suited. It'll more likely than not be a pair of some sort. You know, whether that's aces and kings or eights and nines, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. But with the amount of dead money in the middle already with nearly $200 out there, although I don't love it and I cannot advocate for doing this, I think it's all right to call here sometimes. So I'll, I end up just rejamming to try to isolate the 525 raise here. And luckily for us, everyone else decides to fold. We're running out of board here that comes out 10 at 9.5. As we mentioned, almost $1,300 in the middle. The biggest pot I've played all night. Looking for things to go my way. And the turn card comes a beautiful jack of spades. Well, that excitement is short-lived when my opponent shows pocket jack. So, the last jack in the deck to bring me a little bit of hope was actually the one that I didn't want to see. We're drawing stone dead. The river's an inconsequential four of clubs. We're shipping this pot over to our newfound friend, Mr. Alex. Good hand to you, sir. Unfortunate there that we couldn't catch up, but once again, we were getting the right price to make this call either way. And here we are, moving on once again. Believe it or not, sooner or later, I'll end up winning a hand. Under the gun decides to limp. I'm next to act, and I look down at ace deuce of spades. Well, it looks like there is a virus out here. Something that has been known to give symptoms of limping. I end up limping. I'm, I'm getting in with the cool kids, I guess. Middle position decides to isolate to 60. The straddle calls. And with the action back over to me, we have a pretty easy call with a suited ace. We're going off to a flop three ways that comes out 10, 4, 3 with two hearts. The action ends up checking through, which is great as we now get to realize some equity for free. And realize we do when the turn card is a beautiful five of diamonds. This does bring a backdoor flush. And now there's two flush draws out there. But we have what feels like the effect of nuts. At this point, the straddler decides to lead out for 120. With still a player to act behind me, I think sometimes you can consider flat calling. But in all reality, I think raising here is definitely the play that's best. Getting the money in the middle as fast as we can with as much equity that is out there is best. A bunch of combo draws are going to probably consider stacking off or at least putting more money in the middle. I would hate to just make this call here and allow the player to behind me to call or fold is not really the, the problem. The problem is if my opponent breaks out in the river, considering how unbelievably passive the game is played, I just doubt that anyone's going to go for a big bluff on the river. I'd rather put the pressure on now and get them to commit as much of their stack while they have some equity in this pot as opposed to getting to the river and just being put in a bad spot where either it comes a really bad river card for them or me or doesn't matter, but it would just slow down the action. I end up raising to 325 after all of that, and my opponent ends up making the call. Looking like we're going to be building a massive pot here until the river card comes a six of clubs. Not great for a lot of reasons. A lot of the pair plus straight draws now get there. A lot of the hands that had really good equity here or a really good hold on the hand or top pair, top kicker, those all those holdings, all those two pair holdings, yeah, they're hating this river. All of my bluffs now get there. So when the actions check to me, obviously it's just not going to be easy enough for me to go for value here. Again, I think there is a small chance that I can throw out a small prodding bet, but for the most part, I'm almost never going to get called by worse Again, maybe, just maybe my opponent will call me with the set. But even then, this is just probably a pretty easy fold for them. So I just end up doing the smart thing, I think, in real time and just checking it back. And luckily for us, our opponent doesn't have a 7. And I show my hand and we end up getting the pot pushed our way. 
I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys think I missed out on some value. I just think that all the draws break out there, and it's just hard for me to get any more value than I already got. Outside of all the hands you see here on the vlog, there's a bunch of other hands that just don't make the cuts that are even more boring than some of the ones y'all saw today. Whether it's a 3-bet, C-bet, and fold type thing, there's just been a bunch of hands where I'm just pretty much raising and taking away with little to no resistance. In this next hand, it's quite the contrary, though. Under the gun limps, the cutoff limps, and then the button, who's that young, solid Euro pro that we were talking about, he decides to isolate to 50. The small blind makes a call, and I'm in the straddle, and I look down at Queen Jack of Hearts. This is kind of a tricky spot here, as there's quite a bit of dead money in the middle. I think, honestly, the best play here against people this passive is probably just to try to make a play at the hand here and maybe four better or three better i should say make it it 200 to go is probably the best thing to do in the long run in a game like this but in real time like i said although i am out of position this hand plays so well post flop that it's all right so i just go ahead and make the call here playing a little passive myself monkey see monkey do i guess right Either way, both limpers make the call, and we're going five ways off to a flop that comes Jack-9-4 Rainbow. With the action checked over to the initial Razor, I'm expecting him to be checking like nearly 100% of the time. It's really hard to find a C-bet multi-way, this multi-way as well. But once again, I am wrong. My opponent decides to bet $80, and with the action folded over to me, I'm kind of in a little bit of a tricky spot here. Although I do flop top pair and a pretty decent kicker, the one thing I have to realize that is my opponent is probably going to be barreling off on all turns and all rivers. If he's willing to bet this flop with whatever he has now, whether it's a bluff or value, he's probably going to go along the entire way with it. Well, again, we still have the opportunity to improve by virtue of a queen or a jack or a 10 even to give us some more equity. So I go ahead and make the call. Everyone else folds. We're going heads up to a turn card that comes the five of diamonds. Again, I don't improve beyond already having top pair, but again, a little bit of a tricky spot where I check over to my opponent and he puts out a massive bet of 350. Once again, I'm just kind of in a precarious situation where my hand doesn't do a great job and doesn't improve a whole lot here, but I really don't know how to feel about it. I'm definitely in between calling and folding, but as I mentioned earlier, if I call here, I'm almost always going to have to expect the clip being unloaded on the river. I just can't find a whole lot of bluffs here. Maybe my opponent can have a hand like 10-8 uh, or queen-10, but it feels like in all reality, I'm just up, up against a hand like aces, kings, queens even, but as strong as a hand like ace-jack. I think that's the weakest hand that can be betting this two streets. But even then, after all this tanking, and I tank for quite a bit of time, I end up making a pretty tough and a pretty tight laydown. At the very end of the session, the player was kind enough to tell me what he had so i'll leave it for you guys now i want to ask you folks what is the hand that you think my opponent had at the end of the session i will reveal it to you all but i'd like to know what do you guys think he had good fold bad fold let me know in the comment section down below rounding out today's session we're going to be finishing up with one last fun hand in which from under the gun we look at yet another premium king queen of clubs i raced to 30 next to act calls the button calls as well shaping up perfectly for our friend here in the small blind the euro pro to look up a squeeze and a squeeze he does as he makes it once again 160 dollars to go earlier we forbid him with the ace queen off here again definitely erring on the side of aggression but it just feels like to me that this is a pretty good opportunity to throw in the old squeeze again my opponent just is going to be doing this with a really solid range here it won't always be aces kings queens and jacks and with the amount of dead money in there, I feel like there's even a chance he's doing it a little wider as well. All of that to be said, I've got to go for it because that's just how we roll, baby. I go ahead and repop him for $420 for the 4-bet. The action folds back to our friend and he eventually decides to make the fold. Good for us as he is the one that got us out in the last hand, so we went a little bit back here. We are going tit for tat tonight and it uh, looks like we're going to have to call it a stalemate. Either way, today's session, although didn't have very many massive hands, I think it was a good showing of patience and a little bit of discipline on my end. With the opportunity to go nuts in some little spots here and there, 
we did a pretty good job of, of holding back and not losing big pots outside of maybe one hand. And like I said, finding some some good value some other spots and, and zigging when we needed to zig and zagging when we needed to zag. All that to be said, the one thing I need to tell you guys is what my opponent had in that last hand. So in that queen jack of hearts hand on that jack nine board, my opponent would later tell me that he had queen ten. So, I don't know. Believe him, don't believe him, but uh, he seemed pretty sincere to me. I didn't think that he'd lie to me about it, and it's nice to know that. But uh, either way, against his entire range, I just don't think I'm doing too good against that hand. Like I said, I think his range is going to be made up of a lot of aces, kings, Queen 10 seems to be like the only real bluff I can think of. Outside of that, I hope to throw it over to me in real time to see how we feel at the end of the session. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. It's too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. So that will conclude today's session here from Ocean's Eleven. It's been a really long time since I've been here. Five to six years. The last time I was here was for a uh, tournament that I made day two on that I didn't even know was here. Playing at the bike and at the time that this Quantum series for some reason. Game was, I know, not some kind of crazy action or anything like that. It's hard to beat LA, obviously, but the people were really great. The staff was unbelievably well trained and uh, yeah, I don't have a single complaint about the poker room. Positive things, really. <laughs> I wish they were paying me to say all this. I do, but um, it was just clean. They renovated it. They did a great job. It's, it's pretty. Honestly, it's just nice. Like I said, it's a massive upgrade coming from the places I am back in California. It is no Lucky Lady Casino, I'll tell you that much. But outside of that, it's been a great day. Got a lot to f look forward to. Hopefully on this trip, I can hit maybe one more casino while I'm out here. Maybe check out like 7 Mile or whatever else is out here. But if not, it, it was pretty fun. And we were into this game for 15 or 1400. I can't remember. We played 2-5 as you guys saw, but it was 2 five, ten the entire time. But the max was 1200. We topped off for a couple hundred after we lost that all-in hand with Ace Jack. Luckily, we lost it to somebody I would I would end up calling a friend. Uh, really nice gentleman. Uh, most of the table is just outstanding. So, wish I took more money. So, I, I felt like I was actually kissing some butt here. But in reality, we were out of the game for about 1810 or something. Um, so, a profit of three or 400 bucks and some change. So, we'll take it. I mean, hey, that covers half of my Airbnb for the night. So, hope you guys have a lovely day. I'm going to get back to the beach because I'm on vacation. I love you guys all. I'll see you folks soon. Stay happy, so more importantly, we're going to the tables. Y'all do. You know they're locking up blacks and Latinos. It's the same old game. Ain't nothing really changed but the mileage on the meter of the beam. You get cold when you ride with the heater. It'll turn you to a dog like a keto. And expose to a cat like a cheetah. They smoke my partner like reefer.